Ya Allah, Allah. Allah, Allah, Allah. Ya Allah, Allah. Ya me, Rakis. Ya Allah, the Dom. Makarian Dios. Ya Allah, Erdonai. Ya Allah, Elohim. Kurios Dios, Pentecrita. Kurios Dios, Pestos. El de et Jehová, y el emuná Jehová. Y vas a leer curios, otios, o pentecreta. Vas a leer, vas a leer, que curios, curio. Jehová de bar halal, Elohim de bar halal. Jehová Elohim, gadol, gadol, gebra. El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos, Ton Christon, Isun Ton Kurion, Kurion Mahagion Pantagreta, Gadol Gadol Gebra, Yehova Ishmael Kam, Yehova Shamma, El Nakum Yehova, El Nakum Yapa. Natsak Israel la Shaker Gava Gava Triembos Yehova Isus Christos Pantecreta Gadol Gadol Gedura Moraros Nasa Elohim Elohim Ilelai Shalut Yehova Malak Yehova Malak Olam Olam Ad Yehovah Eloheinu, Yehovah Ekad, Gadol Gadol Gebra. Zaan Lagan Ogar Tautios, Dulas Desmias Despotes, Dikaes Une and Jesus Christos, Kurion, 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 Hagion, 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 Numa Pantagreta, Gadol Gadol Gebra. Yehova Ihe Elohim. Yehova Ihe Elohim. Ile Lai Shalut. Yehova Malak. Yehova Malak. Olam Olam Ad. Yehova Eleheno. Yehova Ekad. Gadol Gadol Gebra. Yehova, Yehova El, Yehova, Yehova Rakum Shen, Yehova El Arak Ape, Rab Keset Emet, Yehova Mine Mine Tikel Ufarsin, Derek Emunabakar Mishvat Shab. Damega Logai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Steady to show thyself for prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkeno to the highest. And peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath 
in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory to be the authorized spokesman of the Lord, preaching and teaching nothing but the infallible and inerrant word of Lord God, so that people can recognize Christ is our life and it is his word, our rule. Keeping that in the midst of such empty wilderness, rather than looking our pleasures in this dry and barren pastures by drinking the waters of strife, Let's come to recognize and understand the importance of the Lord's word. From the spokesman being authorized by the Lord God in the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher. In performing the things that which are pleasing to Lord God the Father. Rather than opening up our mouth. As Romans chapter 3 in verse number 14. He says their mouth is not at all. A mouth to be called as worthy because it is being full of cursing and bitterness. And these things are very, very essential for us to learn since we cannot be under the standards of what we can call fraud or deceit or cursing. We cannot be in that caliber of the people where sin is over joy. But we have to use our tongue to be a blessing. A blessing called to be. Making your every thought to be renewed as a grammatious program. In the presence of the Lord. Rather than non-renewed mind. The mind which is cursed is a non-renewed mind. So the mouth, is it full of cursing? bitterness or is it full of truth so that in his holy hill the people who shall dwell are the ones who walk uprightly are the ones who work righteousness and are the ones who speak the truth so dear brethren use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. And let's come back and continue what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date of eternity past to the praise of his glory in his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall continue after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of the Lord's mind. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, once again coming into the marvelous grace, O Lord, to learn thy truth. What a great privilege it is, O Lord, to be the authorized spokesman on the earth. From the minute iota till to the major doctrines of your mind, O Lord. Though we don't deserve, Father, you have given us this privilege to handle it. Because, Lord, what we are to talk about your essence because we are nothing but absolute holes in nature, constantly deceiving you. But in this short span of time, O oh Lord, you have called us to be your spokesman, to teach your truth as being called as Nabi, and making the world to recognize your truth from the Bible, which is purely your bona fide gift, and nothing we deserve for it, O oh Lord. Having this great life of us, we continue today to learn the mind of yours, for which cause, O oh Lord, you have given us this breath. And as we come to study the mind of yours, O oh Lord, on today's date of eternity past, which thou hast prepared and kept for us, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, to challenge, and to bless us by the message of yours, which is glorifying you, rather than the own words of us, which will be 
not glorifying you but blaspheming you when we use our own words and thoughts rather than your your words and your thoughts so father as we come to study your mind the things which thou has prepared for us we pray the mentor minister of lord god the holy ghost to enlighten to challenge and to bless us by this message of yours on today's date of entry past to the praise of your glory in a matchless marvelous infinite divine glorious grace in Christ's name we ask sovereign lord amen in isaiah chapter 3 we have the lessons to be continued from isaiah chapter 2 in verse number 22 claiming what is man he has only breath in his nostrils so sees from the viewpoint of man that is build up a wall of fortification to get every thought like a disciple oriented believer to Christ because man adama who is having breath that means in his vigor and valor in his thought process of his blood he has breath in his nostrils and what for he can be accounted of and to such man calling to be differentiated as the prophets called to be his spokesman authorized he has given to look up to what extent we can be faithful and today much of the pastor teachers are not faithful to the original exegesis of the word of the lord they're not able to look upon to be what for they can be accounted though they have given this bona fide gift of the pastor teacher to study and to teach because it demands preparation preparation from the original language of the scriptures if those things haven't been done if those things haven't been made up then it meant to say what you cannot be his spokesman being his spokesman your primary duty will be to speak what has been intended for us in the lord's mind and what is there for us in the 66 books we need to talk and how we need to talk original exegeo my standards hebrew greek and aramaic apart from that if you would love to talk the things what we find in isaiah chapter 3 explaining eloquent orator the things what we are able to look to in our pulpits he said in verse number 8 of isaiah 3 because of the taunt and because of their doings i will punish them because their mouth is full of cursing it is full of blasphemy so it says sees from man what worth is come unto lord god ask in the presence of lord god the father to give you that guidance of the truth so that you can understand the lord's word you can realize the lord's word you can go to explain the lord's truth because when he begins in Isaiah chapter 3 in verse 1 he says that behold the lord that is adonai again the lord of hosts yehovah elohim of sabat doth take away from jerusalem and from judah the stay and the staff that is the thought process in your view point should be the vigor and valor of bible doctrine so that the thought process of yours though it has been stay and the staff he says the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of the water that is the way how the people can recognize the real life begins with the water and the bread of the word of lord god water representing lord god the holy spirit bread representing the completed canon scripture the word of the law and then he says the mighty men and the man of war the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient the captain of the 50 the honorable men the counselor the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator and then he said I will give children to the princes and babes shall rule over them that means if they not having to have the stay and the staff with them then for sure dear brother the things which will come by sin called to be the great calamities will fall upon them because the word stay over here if you can look he says in Leviticus 26 26 when i have broken the staff of your bread 10 women shall bake your bread in one oven 
and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight and you shall eat and not be satisfied that means what these people when they are not hearing the word of lord god but they want the things to be done according to their own pleasure according to the inventions of man that's what we read in isaiah 222 therefore he said cease don't account to yourselves there cease it off you cannot have those inventions there cease it off because when you have this stay and the staff that means representing over here for the food but we know it is nothing but the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit and the word of god that means when these have not been there you know what all the mighty man will be he said the mighty man the first caliber the man of war the second caliber including the church the third the fourth one the false prophets the fifth one the prudent the sixth one called to be the ancient all this caliber of men are worthless he says the seventh one the captain of 50 the honorable man the eighth one the ninth one the counselor the tenth one called to be cunning artificer the eloquent orator called to be the eleventh one he said i will give children to be their princes that means the people who are having the attitude of becoming like a small children and that's what he said such will be the kingdom of god where they come simply to know the word of truth become a witness for the truth and perform the things pertaining to the truth such caliber of the people he calls the children so that the vigor and valor in the viewpoint will be renewed for bible doctrine so he said i will give children to be what now your rulers the word princes over here is nothing but sar that means they will be the chief rulers they will be the leaders therefore no matter what may be the pressure the head will be renewed as per bible doctrine so dear brethren he says they will be like the rulers the little babies will be the rulers upon whom upon such eleven categories of the man and babies the one who are going to be the viewpoint of discipleship program to those if you can look the word for baby is called to be again talul and the word talul is nothing but that which has been called like the things which shall be like uh, uh, this uh, vexation or to act severely that means this people who have come to the viewpoint of discipleship program this babies shall rule the word rule is called to be mashal that means they will have dominion they will have the reigning power so that the blood in them and in the thought process in them will be absolutely discipleship program because they have come as a discipleship program to the lord therefore no matter what authorities they will make up the blood and the thought process to be purely discipleship program to christ and there is nothing to be spared in it so they come as a discipleship program to the lord so he says over here in simple terms what we ought to be to the lord so he teaches that the babes shall be the rulers <coughs> mashal they shall have the dominion <coughs> that's what the same thing we can read from psalm 119 verse 97 and following through the word of lord god itself we can become wiser than our enemies and he goes to teach to us you'll have great wisdom and knowledge than your teachers that's what the babies try to rule because babies are purely the viewpoint of discipleship program to Christ so dear brother in psalm 119 if you can look he says over here in verse number 97 these things are very essential for us the main file he said oh how i love the law it is my meditation all the day but over here he says the staff and the stay is been cut off so that the eleven categories of the people representing the eleven disciples over there in the time of my christ whatsoever manner they may be they may be a man of war because one is gone out by suiciding himself the zulu is covered the remaining eleven if you can compare those eleven to that eleven the eleven caliber over there he said they have loved the lord they have made up the things pertaining to god until the day of the things pertaining to the pentecost and the spirit being breathed upon them they were also like the staff in the stay being cut off they were acting like that 
feared, worried, and afterwards when they got the word of Lord God, how powerful they became. You can find them in those 11 categories for the 11 apostles, you can compare that. Because here also when we find the distinction for 11 categories of the people, you can clearly know up to what extent those 11 apostles, till they could receive the power of the Holy Spirit of God from heaven, they were also like the same people who have been cut off with the stay and the staff because Lord God says, your shepherd will be smitten and the sheep will go out. So it has happened. He struck the shepherd and the sheep has been gone out. So the same thing over here, dear brothers, when we look, teaching to us the same points to understand this loving caliber of men, the mighty men till to the point of great orator, all these people will go out because these people were not having the hope till they could find the ten days they couldn't stand. The ten days, if it were not to be breathed by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, they wouldn't have been there. The day of Pentecost, they get the power. But how did they stood? They stood only for the love of the Lord. The same thing over here, we look in verse 97 of Psalm 19. Oh, how, how I love thy law. It is my meditation. You know what is this word meditation over here? It is called a siak. That means it's my reflection. It's my study. People today are not reflecting the word of truth. It has to completely sweep away your thought. Like what we are reading from Song of Songs, chapter 5, and verse number 4. My darling put his hand in my hall, and he caused the tassels of my seat of unconscious mind to be moved. That's what he calls the word bowels to be moved. Likewise, over here, meditation is nothing but completely sweeping away you in thought completely no excuse for it completely sweeping away you in thought that's what we find over here when he says meditation siak that means you have none to move your unconscious mind you have none to move the seat of your emotions apart from the word of the lord like the right man goes to move the complete thought process of a woman and make her to recognize what is there in the word of Lord God. Likewise over here also, complete thought process has been swept away in thought. That's the word meditation, siak, and the word the pictographical representation teaches. No matter whatever may be the pressure, you have been abiding to the word of truth. You're building up a wall of fortification and you are abiding to the word of truth. And that's what we have been given today to look and to understand from the lesson of Joshua in chapter 24 in verse number 15. As for me and my house, we shall serve the law. That's the word, siak. Be mindful about the things of Christ, as I said, Second Peter chapter 3 in verse number 2. That's what the word, siak. If ever you breathe, you breathe in the Spirit. If ever you walk, you walk in the Spirit. That's what we find in Galatians 5, 16 and following to teach us in verse number 25 that if ever we have been there meditating, let's meditate Bible doctrine, Siak. So dear brethren, we have been called over here to look and to realize and to understand what is that meaning of Siak. Because if you haven't been swept away in the thoughts of Bible doctrine, in the lessons of Bible doctrine, in the teachings of Bible doctrine, if you haven't been able to look upon that and look and understand the things pertaining to God, if you haven't been swept, if you haven't been made up the things pertaining to what the love of God is, you would have ended up like those love and caliber of the men of Isaiah chapter 3, verse number 2 and 3, because the stay and the staff has been cut off. 
That means when there is no word of God, when there is no proper inculcation of Bible doctrine, when there is no proper mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, better you know that it has been cut off. And when it has been cut off, you'll be like that 11 caliber of women, like the 11 apostles they were. 10 days, if they were not been prayed by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what would have been the fate? As I said tonight, the shepherd has been smitten, the sheep will go astray, so it will be. The prayer before that he prayed in John chapter 13 through 17, teaching to us the importance. Even the prayer, what we look in Luke, when it is, when he says about Peter, Satan swayed you. But I pray to God, so that when you return back and strengthen, you come to strengthen up the brethren. And this is most important for us. Because dear brethren, if we are not able to make up our life to be strengthened by meditating upon the word of Lord God daily, then your life will be like that caliber of those love and category beginning with the mighty man till to the eloquent orator. <laughs> and this will be the love and characters of those love and apostles if you can look. The prophetic word, the judge, the prudent man, the skillful artificer. You can find all those caliber over there because these things when Lord God the Father writes over there in Isaiah chapter 2 in verse number 22. He's talking about the inventions of man or the program of man. What has come up, he will be either in those matters of the 11 calibers what we are not. A judge or a prophet or eloquent preacher, a mighty man, a man of war. Those love and reflect back to the loving characters of the apostles because we can clearly understand when Lord God, the Holy Spirit is our guide, mentor and teacher, we have nothing to fear or worry. When Lord God, the Holy Spirit is our guide, is our mentor, is our teacher. We have nothing to worry there. He is the one who guides, he is the one who leads. And he can play all the roles over there with the loving people. And he teaches to them. They waited upon the Holy Spirit of God. They were guided by the paraclete teaching of Holy Spirit of God. They did the things pertaining to God. The same thing what he says over here. That you can be greater, wiser than enemy. Because though you may be a baby to rule over them. The rule to say wiser than your enemies. The rule to say that you can be greater knowledge than your teacher. Why? The only one thing. Love the word of God. That's the only key. Love the word of Lord God. Nothing else than that. Love the word of Lord God. That's what you have been called over here. So he said when you love the word of Lord God, it will be your meditation. And what is that meditation? Siak. And what is that meditation? No matter what may be the pressure, he would say, build up a wall of fortification according to Bible doctrine. That's what the things over here are. Siak. The word of meditation. And today, dear brethren, we are not having that word of meditation to work. We have been such a false ones on this earth that we are not even worried to be what will be the word of meditation for us. Sweeping away your thoughts completely to the word of God is what meditation is. That means you talk nothing but the divine viewpoint. You look nothing but the divine viewpoint. In anything you find, you find a solution that could be great to be as a reflection of witness in the days to come as a divine viewpoint. That's what your real life should be. Nothing but divine viewpoint. You look divine viewpoint. You think divine viewpoint. You make up divine viewpoint. And there is no excuse for it. Because you'll be having purely divine viewpoint as your life. And that's as simple as that. Divine viewpoint should be your life. That's meditation. If you haven't been swept away in the thought of such divine viewpoint, you will be still like those. Stay in the staff caliber of the people, of those loving characteristics. Though they may be great men, as we can look in that 
to describe those love and characters, Isaiah chapter 3, to remind you once again. He says, what are the calibers of the people over here? The first one, the mighty man. The second one, the man of war. It is Ish, followed by the word Lakim. The third one, the church, Shafat. The fourth one, prophet, Nave. The fifth one, prudent. The sixth one, the ancient. The seventh one, the captain of fifty. The eighth one, honorable man. Ninth one, the counselor. The tenth one, cunning artificer. And the eleventh one, eloquent orator. This love and calibers of the people, what is mentioning over here, he simply teaches to us that how much we are really <laughs> far away from the meditation of the truth in Christ. How much we are really far away from the meditation of the truth in the Lord. That's what he teaches to us. How much we are far away from the meditation of the truth. Because this sort of caliber of the people, what we find over here, he says that for them, the stay and the staff has been cut off. That means they don't have the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. They're not able to engage themselves in the ministry of daily learning the word of the law. Therefore, what they will be, he said, they will be ruled by the babies. It's really a great problem for us to understand that how much we have been really away from the truth. But if they have to be ruled, as the word could show here, in emphasis of the word of Lord God, he says, teaching the point for us, if they have been really associated with the truth, if they have been really thinking upon the truth, then they would recognize how much they have to be because he says in Isaiah chapter 8 in verse number 4, if they have been really under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then such babies wouldn't have been ruling over them in Isaiah chapter 3 in verse number 4. But he said, I have given children to be a princess. The point of the vigor and valor in the viewpoint which has to be renewed as for thought process of Bible doctrine, he said, I have given children to be the princess. No matter what may be the pressure, they will come to rule over you. And babies, that is, their viewpoint of life should be disciple-oriented to the Lord. The babies, and that viewpoint of life to be disciple oriented, they will come and rule. They build up mashal dominion process. And that mashal dominion process is nothing but to make up the blood and the thought process to be purely disciple oriented to the Lord. Why? Because they have loved the word of Lord God more than what? These people should have been loving Christ. Therefore, we find in Psalms 119, in verse number 97, teaching to us the importance that, Oh, how I love thy law. And then he said, It is my meditation all the day. Now, if you look, if you have sweeping, sweeping away in thought of Bible doctrine, then he says, verse number 98, Though through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies, and he said, for they are ever with me. That means the commandments of the Lord of a God, what does it make? It makes all to have wisdom, kakma. Just imagine that love and caliber of the people being ruled by babies. Children becoming princes. Babies becoming the rulers. What an insult it would be for them. Because these people, they have had wisdom. What is wisdom? Learning Bible doctrine to love the word of Lord God more than anything else. Having in your team the man who fears Lord God is greatly benefited with his presence, with his thought process. Having him to be in your presence is a great blessing rather than having the man who can say mighty in power or strength or political influence. No, they all won't do it. A man of word of Lord God is mightier than all of them. Because he will be with the man of knowledge and wisdom. 
and the things which are always pertaining to Lord God the Father will come to pass. A man of great wisdom they will become. In comparison to the sword, as the people would say, pen is more powerful. Likewise, a man with the word of Lord God is more powerful than all the princes being put together. A man of word of God is very powerful because he has set his love upon the Lord. Since he has set his love upon the Lord God, Lord God the Father goes to give him an inaccessibly high position, a great caliber of smile upon his face. It shows that absolute confidence over the trials and the sufferings, where there could be ang lion or dragon or snake or cobra. He will simply give them the strength to trample them down under his feet, says Samson 91. Because he has set his heart upon the Lord God, and Lord God the Father surrounded him to set him high. And such a man who has the love of the word of Lord God, he can be above this love and caliber of the man. What all we read in Isaiah chapter 3 verse number 2 and 3, about them he is a man of a great caliber. Though they may say he is an ancient one, though they may say they are such of eloquent speaker, all those things, but a man of the word of Lord God who is having wisdom, who is wiser than his enemies, <laughs> he is greatly honored in the sight of God. He is greatly honored in them. Because he knows very well the importance of having to love the word of Lord God. He knows the importance of having the meditation of the word of Lord God and completely sweep away them in the thought of the word of Lord God. He knows that to happen. Because dear brethren, we the people of this church age have been given something greater than what the Old Testament saints could ever love. We have been called now to be completely in will by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is something far greater than this, than this attitude of the man. We have been given something great, a great caliber, so that we can not just love, to use any intense word greater than love, we can be that. Not just love, greater than love. If there is any word that you can find, you can be that. Or sometimes even greater word than that because it is what Lord God, the Holy Spirit, makes you to get acquainted to be one flesh with Christ. The way how he makes you to be one flesh with the Lord is a great thing in the word of God. As he says the question to Job, have you noticed how the bones will come to pass in the womb? How the things they will be associated with the womb. How the bones grow up in the womb. The way how he says likewise. The people who have been associated with the truth in Christ. How Lord God the Holy Spirit makes them to grow up. To be a man above all those love and caliber of men. To be a man who can be greater. Than the things what we can find in the concluding chapters of 1 John chapter 2. Emphasizing particularly. That we shall walk in the power of the Spirit. So that we can walk and conform to the image of Christ. Because dear brethren, when he teaches us those things, he is simply teaching to us the importance. That how much we shall be surely making up to reign in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to do his will, to do his mind, to do his thought. Because it is purely the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is able to make you up. Wiser than your enemies, to are greater than Daniel, to are greater than Job, to are greater than Peter or Paul. Because now you are called to walk like Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what we have been given, not just to love the Lord. Something greater than that word could be used, more than the word for love. Therefore, we have been not able to recognize the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what we have. The indwelling entering ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what we have. The power, what we have. The indwelling of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, impact what we can have. You people are not able to recognize that. You people are not able to realize that. 
neither you people are able to return it. Therefore, what you're becoming? You're becoming slaves to your lusts. Therefore, you forgot your life is in Christ. Because if we have been risen with Christ, as Colossians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3, your mind should be set upon the things of above, not the things on the earth. Because we are dead, he said. And our life is now hidden with Christ in God. Therefore, Christ is our life. Our life is not here. The statement of Apostle Paul when he says, For he died, <coughs> and the life is hidden with Christ in God. As dead with him, we are not to act as alive in the world. Because he has died out of the scene of the scene and has no present place in it. We therefore commence our Christian life by taking the place of death. Scripture teaches us that the Father has so completely associated us with his Son that he counts us with him as dead to sin, dead to law, and dead to the world. That's very simple. First of all, you are not able to overcome death to sin, far less the law, neither the world. When you have been put to death to the sin, then automatically the other two will follow because you will not follow rituals but you look for reality in the word of truth you will not be alive to the world because you will say the world is an empty wilderness for a true believer in Christ so you have been brought so completely through the to the death the resurrection ascension of the Lord Jesus out of this sin into a new position and place that it can be said of us, you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. That's the question you need to ask. If you have been driven by the Spirit of God, then you are no longer in the flesh, but in the Spirit. So our life is not here. It cannot be. For we have died to the world, and our life is hidden with Christ in God. That's your new life, the great life. How it would fit, lift us out of our circumstances if we looked steadfastly away from all that we see and looked up to where the Lord Jesus is, remembering that our life is there and that he is our life, what power this would give us over the lust of the flesh and lust of the eye and the pride of life. Because the secret of much of our weakness and failure is in seeking our life in the things of this world. That means to make something great out of this world. Our weaknesses and our failure is purely because we are seeking something, the things in this world. But the world is dead to a Christian when he believes in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is no longer a member of this world when he believes in Christ. He's been dead to the world. If you're not dead to the world, you cannot please the Lord. So dear brethren, he says, Having died and risen with Christ, the believer's life associations should be connected with the place into which he has been brought. Even as Paul says our citizenship is in heaven, only when this truth has been accepted, we will know the joy of occupation of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, being at the right hand of God the Father. So the object of all the fathers dealing with us now is to bring us to the enjoyment of the truth that our citizenship is in heaven and that our life is now hid in Christ. Therefore, we cannot be living the life, the things which are showing out in this world and that will lead you for your weakness and that will lead you for your failure. Therefore, the Father's dealing with us is to now enjoy the truth. Where can you find great enjoyment? What can be a great enjoyment for you? A great thrill. People may think talking that this can be great thrill, that can be great thrill, not at all. The real thrill is when you enjoy the pure word of God in success of the truth in the Lord. The real enjoyment for a believer is that he has known the truth. He is living a life of truth and is reigning in the life of truth because we have been given the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which goes to teach to us that we have to walk a life which is something far greater than the simple love, what we look over here in Psalm 719 in verse number 97. Oh, how I love the law, it has been my reflection, no matter what may be the pressure in my life, I completely make away, sweeping away in thought by building a wall of fortification in for doctrine, all the day, not just in this second or that second, but he says, all the day. That is what he says, all the day. That means all day long, it is my meditation, therefore I love it. Then how much more we have to be today? Breath by breath in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. 
then how much more we have to be to the Lord. Therefore he said, you through your commandments you have made me wiser, kakma. That's the great wisdom what we have today. He says over there the commandments, but now we have Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we have been told repeatedly not to grieve, not to squelch, not to wax, not to lie, not to resist. Not to do anything that which is against the word of Lord God. That's what we have been repeatedly told several times. Because now we don't have the commandments, we have Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And he goes to teach to us the deep things. Therefore, he says in Jeremiah 33, 3, Call unto me and I will show you great things, deep things, the things which your stupid brain can never understand. Never. What is the brain of man that you can think? A brain of man will always look for weakness and failures in his world. It is the spirit that dwells in him, leads him to know the word of God, drives him to understand the will of God. It is that truth of Bible doctrine what we have for us. That is what it leads us every time. Only the truth in Christ. Only the thinking in Christ. Because if we don't have the truth in the Lord, if we don't have the truth in Christ, for sure, dear brethren, we really make up a blasphemy to the Lord. They have been given the breath, you don't love the truth. They have been given the privileges of all the things of a providential prevent you suffering, yet you don't love the truth. It's a great shame and insult to the Lord. But he says you have been given the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that you can become wiser. The word wiser you can use over there to understand, confirming to the image of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, walking in his footsteps to perform the marvelous glory of the Lord, because you are having now in you the sperma of Christ, as 1 John 3, 9. You're having in you the sperm of Christ. That's the great thing. You're having the sperm of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ inculcated in you. The sperm of Christ. And what we're looking day by day. We're not becoming wiser. The reasons why we're not becoming wiser Purely because we are not able to recognize or understand what that wisdom we find in the truth of the word of the Lord. Therefore he said, wiser than whom? Wiser than my enemies. Who are these enemies who use the tongue for cursing and for bitterness? The enemy is the one who goes to put pressure upon your body. Therefore in Romans chapter 3, when we look upon this passage in verse number 14, he said that, <laughs> smiled. <coughs> is full of cursing. The word mouth is called to be stoma, the part of the body, where the thoughts of a man's soul find verbal utterance by his mouth. The heart or soul and the mouth are distinguished so that you can look, the mouth being the edge of a sword. So your mouth has a very good thing to understand. It goes to find the verbal utterances. So whatever you want in your mind to think upon that comes out from your mouth, that's called to be verbal utterances because thoughts of a man of a soul are the, the thoughts of a man's soul find verbal utterances only by his mouth so whenever you open up your mouth to be divine oracles we read in first peter chapter 4 being seasoned with salts is colossians 4 6 on the other hand you have been said if you don't walk in the truth or if you don't make up to be wiser than your enemies you talk the terms of the things which are called salt water coming out from the same mouth, as James 3.10 teaches to us. On the other hand, what you have, as Isaiah 3.8 teaches, the things which your tongue has spoken, you have fallen out for it. You are getting for your own doings by not speaking the truth, <coughs> by not witnessing the truth. How much of your life you still want to look and listen for the things pertaining for your virtue, standards, and righteousness. When a believing in Christ, as Second First Peter chapter 2, verse 1 and 2 teaches to us, get out of those simple five basic baby characters. 
And that we find over here when he says in 1 Peter chapter 2, in verse 1 and 2, he said, First of all, lay aside all malice, all guile, all hypocrisies, all envies, all evil speakings. Keep it aside. If your tongue is not being used to grow up, to teach and talk the things pertaining to Bible doctrine, if your tongue is not grown up to become the pen of a describer, being thoroughly instructed by the Lord's mind, if your tongue has not become that, then for sure, dear brethren, you have lost out many, many things on this earth. If your tongue hasn't become the pen of a describer, he says, it will be exactly what all evil speakings will come out, malice will come out, hypocrisies will come out. Because the tongue is not becoming the will of the Lord, the plan of the Lord, the thinking of the Lord. And how much we are still passing through this life without recognizing the tongue, how stupid it is. You're not recognizing how much of your life is absolutely stupid. So dear brethren, he said, Stoma, the mouth, when you open up, it is called to be pum in the Hebrew, or pehe in the Hebrew. That is, whenever you open up your mouth, it shall not be in the process of the blood. It has to be in the process of renovated thought process of mind. That's what Romans 12, 1, 2, and 3 is all about. Colossians chapter 3, in verse 10 and 11, it is all about. Or Ephesians chapter 4, verses 12, or 8 through 12, which is all about... <coughs> Again, in Colossians chapter 1, verses 25 through 29, it's all about. Renew your thinking. Don't conform to the world. Renew your thinking. Look upon the sounds of thinking of Christ. Renew your thinking in the Lord. That's what you have been called over here. Therefore, he said, oh, mouth. Whenever you open up your mouth, it is not in the flow of the blood. If not, you cannot be a spokesman to the Lord authorized. The real prophets being authorized by Lord God to be his spokesman, they come and talk and do the things pertaining to the standards, what we can call as truth. They speak nothing but the truth. They don't have their own ideas or thoughts to speak of. It is Lord God that leads them. It is Lord God that guides them. It is Lord God who goes to teach them. Because if we can look over there, we can understand how much we are going to have such truth for us. Because the word mouth, when you open up, it has to be the flow of blood in it. And nothing else than that, the flow of blood in it. But he says it is not the flow of blood we need. It has to be the flow of Bible doctrine to come out being renewed thought process in your head. That's what you find over here. Renewed thought process. Not just the flow of blood, renewed thought process in Christ. If you're not able to look upon such a renewed thought process in Christ, then for sure, dear brethren, your mouth will be cursing. Your mouth will be like an open specula because it doesn't have proper truth in it. When there is no truth in it, then what is the worth of your mouth? Better shut it. Because too much eating and too much talking may destroy your body. Isn't it? Too much you talk when you don't have the word of Lord God. But when you have to talk the word of Lord God, you go to tell to them this is the truth because every word what we speak, it has been stated in the Bible, they will be brought into an account. Every word. Every word of yours, it will be brought into examination before the presence of the Lord and every word which is not according to the viewpoint of Bible doctrine or according to the strength of the Bible doctrine, he says, you have to give an answer to the judgment seat of Christ for it. Why you spoke that word? So too much talking will destroy 
And too much eating will destroy your flesh. It will lead for dullness. If you should be hungry enough all the time, two-third part of your stomach be filled up. 75%, remaining 25%, keep it empty. Let it be driving you for having some energy. When all the work is done, that you want to have a relaxation, that time you can eat. If you have been feeling that it's really worth to eat because you have done a great fight for the Lord, you have fought the Lord's battle, and Lord God has given you such a meal to enjoy, <laughs> then you can eat it. Or well, simply don't become slumbers and lazy, because we have to be alert, we have to be awake. We have to look upon the things which are so much well-pleasing to the Lord. We have to be alert. So dear brother, we look to teach and to understand how much important it is for us. That the importance of your mouth, whether it is in the blood or whether it is in the renovated thought process of the head of Christ, because much of the people have failed to look what is the thought process when you have your mouth to open up. But here you look in Romans 3 when he said, Whose mouth? Pehe. What it is? What it is opening up? Is it opening up the blood or is it opening up the divine wisdom? Every word, what Christ, the Lord of God spoke, the people were lingering and hanging upon his lips. What will be his next word coming out of his mouth? Because he was a man well trained to be the tongue of the, the tongue of the scribe, very well trained. And he would speak nothing but the truth to them. Every word they were looking upon what he's going to preach. But today you look upon the preachers, you'll be worried. Because first of all, they don't have the knowledge of Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic. Since they don't have the knowledge of Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, forget their way of life to stand as a witness to the truth in the Lord. They will certainly cheat you. They will cheat the congregation. No, no doubt they may be a great eloquent orators digging and taking up the things from the standards of their commentaries, but it doesn't go to give you that essence. The pure essence, what you find, will be in the Hebrew exegesis, Greek exegesis, Aramaic exegesis. That's what we call exegeomai standards of teaching the word of Lord God. If you're not having that, then once again cross-check your life. Because those things, if you're not being there according to the word of Lord God, you need to cross-check your life. You need to cross-check. And if people are not able to cross-check your life, then what's that life for you worth? Because the pastor who's going to come, he'll be just simply preaching to you, Orator is style. He doesn't go to expound to you the truth. And therefore every word which proceedeth out of his mouth, you have to be looking upon the impact upon your soul, the impact upon the righteousness and the holiness of Lord God the Father demands. Rather than becoming that, are you still unholy? Are you still filthy? That's an impact of his words. Because if he has been an authorized spokesman of the Lord, he will be preaching to you the word of Lord God from the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. If not, forget it. They haven't been sent by the Lord, said Jeremiah 23, long by. Yet they ran. They ran for their own benefits. This is what happens. They ran for their own life. They ran for their own thinking. That's what the word of Lord God teaches for us. I haven't sent them yet they ran. I haven't called them yet they became for themselves the things which they think it's great for them. I haven't done anything for them to talk, but yet they have come for their own purpose. These are not the authorized spokesmen of the Lord. Besides that, they charge for their sermon. So much of money to be given. It's a very huge money. And they would say, the three days of meetings are there for you. A large crowd has been assembling there. 
The first and the second day offerings you collect, the third day offerings you give to me. <laughs> because the third day many people will come thinking it's the last day. <laughs> it has become a business. Selling my Lord's word. That what? It is not my Lord's word, it's worthless words and the people are in that trauma. They are in that trance. They are absolutely delusioned people thinking they have done great things, thinking they have done superb things, thinking they have done XYZ things, but in reality they haven't done anything. They have been traumatized by the so-called Davos dobbing them with false teachings. So what will be the mouth? The mouth will be the viewpoint of human called to be blood pumping in it. They don't have the viewpoint of divine. If not, the scriptures would teach them, make the conscious to recognize that they are preaching and teaching lies. You cannot be a preacher and you can say, that we are really being led by the Spirit of God if you haven't done an examination or a diligent study of the scriptures from the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. If you haven't done that, then forget it. Forget. You're not at all a preacher. Better don't believe any man who goes to talk to you in the Languages of the things what they have translated, don't believe them. They're talking their own mind, they're talking their own thinking, they're talking their own viewpoint. These haven't been sent by the Lord. If Lord God has appointed and sent them with the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, they would come to teach to the word of Lord God in the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic because they would know the importance of every iota and carrera because they cannot speak of their own. Being an authorized spokesperson of the Lord God, they speak the things of God. That's it. They have nothing more to do than that. The things pertaining to God, they speak out. And they have nothing else to do. The things which are pertaining to Lord God, that's what they speak out. That's what they think. That's what they look. That's what they've been designed for. And nothing else than that. The business is to represent Christ. The business is to think upon the words of my Christ. Therefore, when they open up their mouth, you have to understand whether it is the blood that is talking to them or it is the spirit by renewed word of God talking to them. Because we have so many great things in the word of Lord God, which we have had to teach to these people. Because he said, the things which haven't been there, he says, which they haven't heard, let them come to know. <coughs> right from the beginning, which they haven't known. <coughs> let them come to know, let them understand. Because the things what he has put over here for us, he says, that these things which are pertaining to Lord God the Father, he teaches that which the people they haven't known from the beginning, let them come to know, let them understand, let them look. Because we have so many great things for us to learn. And over here, if these people are not able to be right from the things which haven't been told for you from the beginning, he says, let them come to know about them. The things which haven't been told, which have been hidden and kept from the ancient times, let them know it. Let them come to understand it. Because dear brethren, we have many things to look. Whenever he opens up his mouth, people come to look and learn the knowledge of the word of God, that which has not been told from the previous times. That's what the ancients have been recorded for him to say, that he's been there over here to talk about the things which haven't been known for them from the past. So now they should come to know what has been there for them right from the past. And then, dear brethren, these people, they haven't been understanding what has been there for them right from the past. Because they are prophesizing nothing but the lies to the congregations. And the mouth, when they come to preach, these are not the authorized spokespersons of the Lord. If they were the authorized spokespersons of Christ, 
they would diligently teach the right mind of my Christ. They would diligently make up the things which are pertaining to Lord God the Father. They would simply teach the truth. And nothing else than that, because they have no business to talk about someone's prejudiced mind or what sins they pass through because already they're suffering in their own sins. What we can do for them by cursing on them? They get the rewards according to their own beings. As Apostle Paul could say, I submitted them into the hands of Satan. So we could simply let them go to their own fate, wishing them to recover back as 2 Timothy 2, 24-26 teaches, per adventure, if you can find grace, get out of the trap of Satan. That's it. You have nothing more than that to do because you are blaspheming the Lord God all the time. And since you are blaspheming by the way of your life, having a prejudiced mind upon you, we can not go to preach because that's not the intention of the spokesperson being authorized by the Lord God. The authorized of the Lord God will speak the things pertaining to Christ. And they have nothing to add to it, nothing to delete from it. And because... Every iota and carrera of the Bible is so much important for us. It's very, very important. <coughs> and the things which haven't been known from the past, the ancient times, he said, reveal it to them. Let them know it. <laughs> Let them understand it. Because we have so many things to teach. Therefore, what's your mouth? The word he follows in verse 14 of Romans 3 Gemo. And the word gemo is nothing but being filled, being full. The word male followed by the word over here, nasa. The word male is nothing but your brethren. They shall be all the time in their blood for discipleship program. And then he says the word nasa, in spite of any pressure that could come, they should be overcome in the given valor to reach the discipleship program. But over here, their mouth has been filled up with what? In their blood, it says no to discipleship program. And if they get any pressure in the life, they would say, stop it. We don't want to continue this church. We don't want to continue Bible doctrine. We don't want to come and learn the word of Lord God. That's what they do. And it's a great pain to walk. So they say, male, nasa, the word gemo, which has been used over here in Romans 3.14. Because the blood will say no to discipleship program. Therefore, what they in return do, they come up with cursing. This word is very interesting, dear brother. And the Greek word is ara. That meant to say what? They go for implication. They go for supplication, prayer. They go for imprecation. They go for each and everything. The Hebrew word for it is Allah, A-L-A-H. You know what? They take an oath, they swear. They are jure, but the word meant to say curse. The word Allah is the same pictographical representation what we find for the strong code number 430 for God. Or 410 for God. Over here, but what happens? They come up in the form of cursing, but that we meant to say the teaching and the doctrine don't align with the true word of God. <coughs> Therefore, the Aleph energy of them but be always driving them to say they can be disciples, but for what? But for false things, false teachings, because Satan has been a duplicator right from the beginning. Because Satan has no truth to talk. That's what we look in John 8, 44. No truth in it right from the beginning. It cannot reside in the truth. <coughs> Since it cannot reside in the truth, the concepts like Ara or Allah a L A H for the strong code number 422. They come up in the LF energy to say that their discipleship program training up, but in return, they are training you the cursed things, the things which can't take you to heaven, the things which are far against the word of Lord God. That's what they make up, that's what they do, that's what they teach. Therefore, he says, how is your tongue? Your tongue, if it is not being driven by the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to open up in the wisdom, as we are reading from Psalms 119 verse 98, then how can you be wiser than your enemies? Because your enemies are having such cursed mouth. 
And what does he say? They are also filled up with bitterness. The word pikriya. That is extreme bitterness. And what is extreme bitterness called to be? Mar mara. The way how a harlot could handle a life. Mar mara. MM to use the code. And the word over here for Mar Mara, the way how a herblot could handle a life. Ending up in wickedness, ending up in cry, ending up in pain, ending up with great heavy burden. Because bitterness over here is the blood is driving your thinking, not the spirit. If the Spirit of the Lord of the God is driving your thinking, He first builds a wall of fortification. He makes that first sure to build a wall of fortification. That's what He does. He goes to build up a wall of fortification. And since you have built up a wall of fortification, He knows very well it has to be the rack to walk in the paths of the truth. <coughs> but since you have not gone through the process of Ruach, but it is M.M. Mar Mara, you go for ending up like a harlot's end, which will be bitterness, which will be cry, which will be painful. Therefore he says, whose mouth is full of cursing, number one, Gyomai, because never they make up the blood for discipleship program. Never they make up their strength to come back and look and teach the word of Lord God in the thought process of Bible talk. Never they make up that. Therefore what they be? They be great curse. Allah, they go to represent false systems, false dogmas, false beliefs, false rituals, which are far away from discipleship program to the Lord. That's what they make up. False systems, false dogmas. This is what Allah is all about. 422 strong code number, representing duplicate God for them. The false Antichrist you can call, for example. Instead of Christ who comes, Antichrist. Likewise, instead of God, they get into Allah. A-L-A-H. Ascending to be something which is no way concerned with the truth in Christ. They come to be such Allah. Because the blood will never be for Christ in the truth of discipleship program. The LF energy will never dry them for discipleship program in the Lord. That's what they come up. That's what they look. And that's what they make up their life to be. Because it's a great pain to look how much of the, how much of the people have been cursed by false teachings. Therefore, the very first thing he says, babies will rule. How babies can rule? Because they love the word of Lord God all day long. It is the meditation, siak, which sweeps away. Sweeps away your thoughts completely to the word of God. That's what we want to do happening. The sooner the better you recognize we are heavenly citizens, our life is in Christ, we are not of the world. The sooner the better we be free from the indulgence of the flesh, which is in this world, occurring for your weaknesses, occurring for your failure. The sooner the better you get out of these things. Because dear brethren, if you can look, how much of your life you are still Passing through such wilderness journey, empty wilderness journey, dry and barren pastures, waters of strife and bread of affliction. How many days more you want to eat that? Like the prodigal son at least comes back to his senses when he's eating the pig's husks. And even the word husk over there in Luke chapter 15, if you can look, it has a great implication for us to learn because it has not just been recorded by the Holy Spirit of Lord God to be something. But he says, the word husk for him, which is nothing but, as the word says in the Greek, keraton. And the word keraton, which is nothing but the locust food he writes, which John the Baptist was been there. But here if you can find the word for keraton, 
It could be like keros, so like a horn shape. But the pictographical representation says in the word for karan is from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, this man has completely failed to renew his head. That's what he's proving, big husk. In his vigor and valor, he's been completely out. That's what he's proving. Keran to shine. From the rising of the sun till to the going of the sun, his head not at all been renewed. The vigor and valor of him is not at all been renewed. That's what the meaning of the word Keran is all about. Because the word husk, you may find it to be like a locust or a shape of a horn or the food of the John the Baptist. No, but the real pictographical representation for Chiron over there, it has been used to shine forth. It is nothing but to give him his mind from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun. How much his head has been renewed in the vigor and valor given to him through the knowledge of the word of God. That's what Chiron is all about. And what we're finding day by day, we're not able to look upon Karen because we're not interested for Karen caliber mind of the people. What we're looking, we are still looking the evil content, the pig's husk's foot. That means you are no way concerned at all for discipleship program. You are no way concerned at all. Definition of a true Christian in Acts chapter 11. You are not at all considering that in your mind or in your brain. You are simply let it go. Therefore you people cannot be qualified as Christians far less you think you have heaven. Look upon the definition of a Christian continually coming to church for a span of one year, 365 days trained once. Those 365 days who have been trained for the first time in Antioch were called. Those trained disciples were called as Christians to the Lord. That's what they have been called over here in Christ. Christians, trained disciples of the Lord. For a span of one year. And we are not able to recognize how much it is that we have to be faithful to the Lord. How much it is we have to be faithful to the truth. How much it is we have to be faithful to Christ. We are not able to recognize that. Because you are still eating the pig's husks. And what eat it? Swine, kairos. The meaning of the word swine over here, dear brethren. It is Nothing but that which could be as the point we know very well as a hog, as a derivation from a hog, which is going to be like a swine. And swine, what does it do? It doesn't have the difference to know what is clean or unclean. Many Christians have become like sky, like, like the swine. Because he said, no man gave unto him any food. He is filling his belly with the husks now. And the word Keran over here, what we look, he emphasizes the point, he's filling up his belly to shine out what exactly he's been passing through. He's sending out his rays to examine, to display, to grow up and to understand what is actually going on wrong with him in his life. So we find the word to shine up as the rays of the light, as, the, as like the horns that go to shine up. So he says, from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, my thought process has to be renewed in the vigor and valor of the truth of the word of the Lord. But it hasn't happened. So he says he wants to shine up. But dear brother, it's not been shined up at all. What are the reasons that they haven't been shined up? He's filling up his belly now to recollect that. How much his mouth has been filled up with the human viewpoint pumping in his blood. So, dear brethren, in Isaiah chapter 3, he says, Babes will rule over you because they have been loving the word of Lord God more than you. 
Therefore, he says, they shall be the rule. And then he says, all the people shall be oppressed, everyone by another and everyone off by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient and the base against the honorable. What a man! When a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou a ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be a healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me a ruler of the people. Make me not a ruler of the people. For Judge Shalem, he goes the reason to say it is ruined. And Judah is fallen because the tongue and the doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. <coughs> Judge Shalem has been ruined. The word ruined. It is called as kashal. That means they've stumbled up. How they stumbled up? Grammatius program in their thought process is gone. They should have been actually grown up into Grammatius. They should go and make disciples of all the nations. But he look over here to understand. The grammatious thought process is gone. Therefore, Church Shulim, the one who has to teach the peace, or the one who has to inculcate the life with the truth of peace, it has become absolutely ruined. The grammatious program has been ruined. So we need to look. How much is your life? Is it been ruined or what? The first thing you need to cross check, you should be a teacher of peace, but it is ruining that meant to say what you don't have. The power like grammar is authority in a thought process. Therefore he says it has been ruined. The grammar thought process has been ruined. It is not going up into discipleship program to the Lord. And the one who should actually give praise called to be Judah he said it is fallen. And the meaning of the word fallen is called napel. What does it mean to say? The vigor and valor of their mouth is far away from discipleship program. Today people are thinking they're praising the Lord as Judah, but they forgot they have fallen. Because they think they have in this church church great privilege by simply getting into heaven by faith alone in Christ alone. But they don't recognize their fallen ones. Why the fallen ones? Because the vigor and valor in their mouth is not calling for discipleship program to the Lord. They haven't understood about that. The vigor and valor in their mouth is not for calling for discipleship program in the Lord. Therefore, they are completely gone. And what they are trying to do day by day, just look. Thinking upon the standards of these people, you will recognize what they are trying to do. They have nothing. Because they have fallen. The church, if it doesn't find a faithful spokesman given by the Lord God, teaching the word of Lord God from the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, if the church doesn't find such a pastor teacher, then it's fallen. Because in the praised thinking of the Lord God, what they think it has been fallen. And we are as if in the dream you're spending your time today, thinking that you're really walking in Christianity, you're thinking that you're praising and glorifying God, but it is like a dream. When you wake up, you will find nothing. Because you have been making up the standards what we look over here. Ruined nature, because first of all, Matthew 13, 52 has not been fulfilled, so that you can go and fulfill Matthew 28, 18 through 20, the great desire of Lord God the Father to be achieved. 1 Timothy 2, 4, you are not in that business. You are not at all in that business. Because your grammatical program is not able to renew your thought process, to go and make disciples of all the nations. That's what you have gone there forever. That means you are ruined. The teaching of peace is gone. You are ruined and praise has become fallen. Because why? In our pulpits today, if you can look, there is no discipleship program being taught because these men haven't been sent by the Lord God to be the authorized spokespersons of Yahweh. They're not. If they have been 
authorized spokespersons of Yahweh, they would come to present every believer perfect and complete in all wisdom of the knowledge of Bible doctrines as Colossians 1. They would involve in daily teaching of the word of Lord God. They would make up to say, no matter whether they may be hearers or phobias, our duty is to live a life of Christ and be an example for Christ, so that in the midst of such powers and crooked nation generations, shining forth as light luminaries in the midst of such people, we come to talk nothing but the truth in the law. And we witness that truth. That's what the real caliber of the men being sent by the Lord God will be. They will not be the fallen ones. They knew very well the importance of this church age because it is the praise age of all praises. But all the praises could be in the past or in the future. This church age, we look in Ephesians 1 6 or 1 12 or 1 14. To the praise of his glory in his absolute grace. This age is something brilliant. It's something for great time. It's something fantastic for us. This age is something superb. That which has not been done in the past. We have something marvelous to do in this church age. Therefore, we should be very careful as a true believer in Christ, being indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If you have the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, prove your genuinity by learning the word of Lord God through the internal scriptures of Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. That's what your life should be in the Lord. Nothing else than that. What would you do? Making up your life for the thinking of this earth. In the standards that could actually be for you. But in reality it is not. Therefore when you wake up, what do you find? You will find nothing but sheer vanity. You will find nothing but stupid thinking in your brain. That's what your life will be. Because, dear brethren, much of the time which you're passing through on this earth has been ruining the call of God. The teaching of peace which should be from your mind has ruined. The praise of Judah which shall be from your tongues, it has fallen. Because of your tongues, your tongues have become cursed ones, ara. Your tongues are becoming yam yam, mar mara, bitterness. They're filled up in your blood not to be discipleship program. They're filled up to get pressures upon your head rather than taking out those pressures and coming to do the will of the Lord because of the meditation of a sweeping thought of Bible doctrine. That's what the word of the Lord God should be, but it is gone from your mouths. It has been absolutely away from the truth. The discipleship program, what you have in a thought process should be purely in the vigor and valor of truth. But your tongue hasn't become the discipleship program, the tongue of the learned. Your thinking hasn't become the tongue of the learned. Why? Your thought process is not having the vigor and valor of the word of God. And that dear brethren, if you can look, he said, their tongue is been their doings. And the word over here for doings is called as ma'alal. There we read the word Allah, A-L-A-H, <coughs> in Romans 3.14 for the word ara, which is going to make up a duplicate teachings of God. Exactly, because the pictographical representation is exactly LF energy followed for discipleship program. But over here you come for that LF energy, but not in the true God, but in the false thinkings of the viewpoint of man. So he said over here, <coughs> Ma Alal, M A A L A L. And that is, the viewpoint will be purely for discipleship program in the law. That's what they make up, that's what they look, that's what they think. 
the viewpoint should be purely for discipleship program in the Lord. And today, dear brethren, we the church age are not able to understand the thinking of Christ. <coughs> Rather than knowing and learning the thinking of Christ, <clears throat> we are making our tongue to be our doings. Therefore, we are so reckless. And what we are doing, the result of that will be provocation. The word provocation is called Mara again. It will be rebellious because you are disobedient towards God. Since your disobedience towards God, Lord God the Father will make up to look your blood which is pumping in your head, not the word of God pumping in your head. Therefore you are provoking the eyes of his glory. That is, his, his viewpoint should be in the vigor and valor of his glory. And what is that glory? Kabod. And the word Kabod is grammatious program. The word kabod is making up your body to get every thought into captivity for Christ. You are provoking that eye of glory. That means you are making to understand your own fate of death. By having your distorted thinking in your head. So dear brethren, he says you are provoking the eyes of his glory. And what a life is that? Because of your tongue, because of your doings, because of calling yourselves to be pastor teachers, but in reality not authorized spokesmen of the Lord. Therefore, Lord our God said, you can know them by the doctrine which he, he is teaches. If it is of God, he comes to glorify the Lord God, the Father in heaven. If he is not of God, he teaches to you the thoughts of men, the thinking of men. So dear brethren, he says over here, you are provoking the eyes of his glory, which will be a grammatious program to make sure in your body to get every thought into captivity for Christ. Therefore he said in verse 9, the show of the countenance doth witness against them. That means the appearance of you, the show over here, dear brethren, it is called as Hak, Hak Ara, or the appearance, the expression. The word what we can look for, Hak Hara, is nothing but the grammatious program in their head. This is what the word called to be show, Hak Ara. The countenance is nothing but what they have in the open of their mouth. What is the vigor and valor they have? Do they have the confidence in God? Therefore, he said, the hakara of the countenance witness against them. <coughs> and they declare what? Their sin. They go to Nage'ed. <laughs> and today, if you can understand how beautiful a woman or a man can be, because the appearance of them will clearly show Though they have been aged, they have to be according to the word of God. They will not. He says, their appearance will show. Nage'ed, the word declare over here, what we can find, is called Nage'ed. That means, which you haven't known. Their appearance itself will show what they are. The show of the countenance will show what they are. Therefore, that declares the sin as Sodoma. And they hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. That means the soul which has to be renewed as per the thought process of Bible doctrine. He says they have rewarded for themselves what is called as evil. Woe unto them. They have been rewarded evil to their souls. Woe unto them. And yet, dear brethren, we the church are not able to recognize what could be that evil. 
Woe unto them, because he said they have rewarded evil. For whom? For their own souls. Can anyone give as Christ the Lord of God said to his children or to his child? If he asks uh, a fish, can he give a snake? If he asks a bread, can he give a stone? That means, can you reward evil? But now we are rewarding for your own soul the evil. And that shows purely upon your countenance, he says. The countenance which has become marmara, bitter. Look upon your countenance. You can tell that you are destroying your own soul. Because you are destroying the eyes of the glory. Though you may not look your soul, but he says it is the eyes of the glory you are provoking it. Because you are woeing your own soul. By rewarding evil to it, because there is no erection of a structure in the blood to be disciple oriented to the Lord. There is no thinking which has to be renewed as for the thought process of Bible doctrine. Therefore, he says, you have been rewarded evil, woe to your soul. <laughs> and the countenance of you will speak out all the things he said. That countenance will witness. They go to declare. The sin is like sodomites. Because they have built a wall of fortification to such an extent, dear brethren, that they want to be a burning passion of sin in their lives. A burning passion of sin. The sin will be like the sodomites. And it cannot be hidden, cacad. It cannot be concealed. It cannot be covered up because he knows very well the people who are not grammatious program will be disqualified. Matthew 13, 52. In spite of teaching the six parables over there, people are still disqualified because they cannot be covered up. You are covering up only when you grow up into scribe. You are covering up only when you make up your thought process to be built up as a wall of fortification to the Lord by getting every thought into captivity for the Lord. So he said, it cannot be covered. <laughs> the countenance itself shows. If you can look into the countenance of Moses, 120 years old, his eyesight was not dimmed, neither is vigor and valor has been abated. That is a real countenance in the Lord, being driven by the power of the Lord. And therefore he said to the righteous in verse 10, Say you to the righteous that it shall be well with them, top good, because they eat the fruit of their doings. But woe to the wicked, it shall be ill with them, because the reward of his hand shall be given into him. So how is your tongue filled with cursing of eternals? Do you want to meditate upon the word of Lord God, being filled with Lord God, the Holy Spirit controlling and guiding and leading you? Or you still want to talk the human viewpoint on this earth? What is the process of life? What's your thinking of life? What are you making up of life in the Lord? Dear brethren, the life what we have right now is a very, very precious gift. Every day as we calculated yesterday's message, your 10,000 to 40,000 days on this earth are we going to spend? Every day, moment by moment, you have to be controlled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Every breath of yours should be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. How are you making it up? In the presence of the Lord God, it is not the body that talks. It is the spirit which goes to renew your soul. For the most high Lord God's will being performed, having a seal. <laughs> that is, I've been sent by the Lord in doing the will of the great Lord of God. This is what they do. And this is what they perform to Christ. And that, dear brethren, how many days more? 
How many days more you still want to live a life that which is contrary to the truth in Christ? How many days more? Is there anything worth for you in this life? For unto your own soul you are making up by the burning sin, by rejecting the word of Lord God. Do you think is that worth? The thing what we have in Christ is far more superior to become the tongue of the learned and do the great will of Lord God the Father rather than becoming stupid things on this earth which are absolute contrary to the Lord's word. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. Because life is too short for us. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large for us. Whether you want to make up your own life a cursed one, your own soul being given for the reward of evil. <laughs> because the word reward is fully recompense. You haven't erected a structure in your blood for discipleship program. You're rewarding it evil. Or you want to be like a righteous one to say, well, eat the fruit of your doings. And to the wicked ill because of the reward of the hands that shall be given for him. So you want to provoke the eyes of his glory by the tongue of your words which you're going to do, being ruined and fallen. I want to love the word of Lord, cut and sweep away every thought in the meditation of Bible doctrine and preach to trample down Satan under your feet, being more wisdomized than your <coughs> enemies. Because your life is it in Christ, your thinking is it in Christ. Your standards are made to perform the deeds of Christ to the praise of his glory. In his grace under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. Because life is too short for us. And the responsibility laid on our shoulders is too large for us. And yet still how many days more you want to be alive, which is contrary to the word of truth, rather than performing the marvelous, glorious will in this great kinecatesis of caliber in the church age and performing the pallid wonders of the Lord's truth. So which way you want to be a brother and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost led us to the praise of his glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So how is your show of your countenance reflecting the condition of your soul? If it is not bright and blissful in the sight of the Lord, it has to be hakara, a great tremendous of joy because you're growing up into Kramatia's program. Renewing your thought process, if it is not that, then your countenance will witness against you, declaring your sin as Sodoma. It cannot be hided, concealed, but rather your soul will be looking by a wall for rewarding evil to it, rather than learning the truth in it daily for the thinking of my cross. So which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory and His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing ones being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope and without His more life. In audible telling to Lord God, the Father, and the prayers of His soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. But as for the believer, the grace must grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Maybe they shall learn the quiet process to know the truth, the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the grace must care so thumble down. Herald the word in season, out of sin, because the diamond of my witnesses with you have been called. The number one diamond of my witnesses in willing trinity, if I have the Bible in our hands. And number two diamond of my witnesses are hearers. If they are no hearers, dear brother, and not very besides nature, 
The entire angelicos were witnesses and what so work, the work is rightly divided, the word of truth. No matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost, let us to the praise of his glory, in his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, being grateful and thankful, O Lord, for this great and the privilege to understand your mind in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to recognize how much the countenance of us, O Lord, will surely speak out unto you. It cannot be hid, O Lord, you have said. Our countenance speaks out, O Lord, how much we are rewarding evil to our soul. Help us, O Lord, not to do that. Help us, O Lord, to be all the time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Help us, O Lord, to understand the indwelling entering ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, controlling, guiding, leading and teaching us, so that we shall not reward evil to our soul. But rather, O Lord, use our tongue to be the tongue of the learned and preach your truth, making these people to recognize the most high, holy, heavenly calling of all time as heavenly citizens, making the world to recognize and understand the importance of your great infallible and inherent word of Lord God being controlled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and performing the things of your glory according to your word. So, Father, being grateful and thankful for this privilege, which Thou hast given to learn Your mind in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we pray, Sovereign Lord, that You enlighten and challenge and bless us by this message of Yours, which could enlighten and make our lives to recognize how much we are really making our soul to be rewarded with evil, though we may appear in the show of countenance to the world as if being well dressed or well appeared, but our inner man is just like a dead man bones being suffering because not having the feeding of the word of Lord God into it. So Father, committing everything into your mighty hands, O Lord, you are the only one who can transform from the death to life. You are the only one, O Lord, who can give us once again to revive our life in strength. In spite of all the troubles we pass through or they look through, it's purely your mind, O Lord, we have. And so, Father, as we have come into your presence to understand it, to be mine by your word which you have taught for us today, we pray that thou alone might be glorified. And Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten and challenge and bless us by this message of yours. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name, we pray, so with Lord. The Lord God, the Holy Ghost, and let us challenge and bless us by these things. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.